Hello, so today I want to talk through what I think is one of the most powerful apps and software for educators now um, to be able to share their content with their students in an interactive, more engaging way. Um, so the app we're going to look at today is called Notion and I first wanted to start by going through some of the main bullet points that make it a viable candidate for you to consider when writing your content and sharing it with your students. So let's start with the basics. So the biggest factor, which has happened very recently in the past couple of weeks, it is now free for students and educators alike. Anyone that has an education email address can sign up for a personal plan for absolutely free, which is a huge, huge benefit. The second thing is it works as a note-taking app, fundamentally, um, but most importantly, which is where some other software has failed for me, it allows you to write LaTeX, like mass formula formulas in nice ways, and even put well-formatted code chunks. They don't run the code, obviously, you can't actually program inside it, but it's a way to format it nicely and be a bit more engaging um, for your students. Um, the next thing is a lot of people use it as well for project task management. Um, this can work both for personal goals and personal tasks for each student, but of course it also can mean you can assign um, you can assign deadlines and goals as an educator for your students as well in a nice way. Um, but then the next step, which I found it most powerful, powerful for when it comes to being a student or being a researcher and also for providing content to others, is that you can basically build up a knowledge base, a repository of knowledge, both in terms of um, linked references, but also in terms of actual content in a really well-structured way. And then you can reference them within other pages so everything can be interconnected. And I'll show this in a bit later, but it's incredibly powerful. It makes it really, really good for improving the interactivity of your courses. Um, of course, there's standard export, um, exporting functions, which make it useful if you ever do need to print something off, you can do a PDF. The app also has desktop versions for both Mac and Windows, and also a mo mobile version, which is powerful because it also means your students can receive notifications and can limit the notifications that receive, so it's at least secure. What I'm trying to um, feature right now um, is it enables you to not only have the core of your content, have the core course in one place, everything, but also you can now embed discussions and comments into each page so students don't have to go through a third party forum page or a separate forum page which is then fragmented up from where it needs to be is they can directly ask questions at the right place that they're getting stuck on and you can then answer as well and i'll show you this in a bit as well and lastly there's huge amounts of features for embeddings so let's show the app itself so here we go uh, so here is a template i built um, this is the main landing page of a course I've kind of mocked up. It's, there's no real content here, but it's just to kind of show the structure of how you could format it. Um, so this is the first place your students will go. Um, so a good place to start is to understand how this works in terms of your position and what you're making and how it's shared to your students. So the idea is you create a course, you, cre you write the content, and then you lock all the pages so the content is can't be edited by anyone except from your people you approve. Um, and then what you do is you then share the workspace, which has the pre-structured content, to your students, um, at which point you would give them a limited access so they can either just read or what I would what I suggest is that they can just comment. Um, students then join with their personal accounts and they would have their own personal workspaces alongside being part of the education one that you've built and they would be able to have their own notes, they'd be able to use it for their own personal planning and they could then um, access the course workspace when needed. So that's kind of how it works quite well. I mean, students can utilize the app for their own personal stuff, but also have access to all the content they need in one place at the same time. It's all in one big centralized platform. Let's start with the basics. Well, what do you need to do? Well, first, we need to be able to write notes. That's a primary function of all this. So here's one of lecture notes, for example. So it's empty, but let's get started. So you obviously have text-based stuff. So you have heading formats, which is pretty standard stuff. So here we go. We have heading one, heading two, and heading three. Um, so this will break up your content so you can structure it nice ways. So in between obviously each heading, you'd have a section of text. So here's some of the content, and then you break things up and form it nicely. Perhaps even put some extra stuff like you can add dividers, so you can really section things up um, and really format your lecture notes as plain text as they need to be um, in nice ways. Um, but then obviously taking this further, if you have core content which is math related, you can add a LaTeX. Um, cell essentially. So 
So here you can add any math you want to, and it will work as it does with standard LaTeX. Obviously, I'm sure if you use math, you're aware of this, and it will format again nicely so you don't have to rely on um, niche packages to write your math. It's It can be done very quickly and easily, and it makes it much nicer to read. Taking that one step further, you can even do code cells, which, as I said before, don't run, but you can have any almost any language you can imagine um, in here. So let's say Python, and you can um, if you write a basic code it will format it in such a way to color code it as would match the um, how it'd be if you're doing an interpreter so it makes it just nice to actually have and format your notes quite nicely so we have bullet lists numbered list toggle list all pretty standard um, and you can tier them as well uh, so if you did number list we did like uh, number one and number two and then in number two let's we had a couple of sub things to do we could do number three number 2.1 number 2.2 and you can change the sub list to be a different kind of list as well. So if you wanted that to be a bullet list, then you can change that as well. You can then you can make that as formatted as you nice would like to be. And then there are sometimes some odd things which make the formatting even nicer. So you have quotes, for example. So if you were trying to, you can make it clear that this has come from a web source or whatever or a quote. Like here is here is a quote. And lastly, callouts, which is what I did highlight before, but a way to kind of really emphasize you're trying to make a point in some um, in one location to be like, uh, tip, do this, for example. Um, and even small stuff that I found particularly useful, for example, is you can have a table of contents, which will basically automatically update based on how many or whatever headers you have or whatever he heading text you have in the notes so far. So if I add a new header here, it will update to be here, here's the header as you can clearly see and it will automatically do that and then you can also it will link to wherever you need to go so that's an overview of a note um, and, it, and the way it works in Notion is everything is really a call a page so that's obvious for a note that's a page but it also means you can have uh, things called sub pages so if you create a new page within this note it would create a sub page would be in here and it would then you'll be able to have really tiered hierarchy based note taking so you can really structure your navigation in such a way to really have it easy to find what you need so the other powerful thing which i don't know if you may have noticed already is there are multiple main calendars here and the reason that is is because there is one core location where the main calendar is saved and then within each module what i've done is i've basically linked a new view of that calendar based on a filter so when i go i'll show you how it works so when i go into a new module and i wanted to make uh the link again I would do a linked database and I would link it to the main calendar and now this is exactly whatever is viewed in the main calendar whatever changes happen will update here and vice versa any changes you make here will be made to the main calendar and all I do now is I add a filter so I only see uh, the content for this module in this view only so this this shows only the stuff relevant to this module from the main calendar and any changes I make here will, will be linked as well. And vice and with the other one as well, with the other link calendar, um, it's again the same for just for this module, data 101 is the module I'm looking at, and so it will only show the events for that module. So it makes it incredibly powerful. And you can do this with other things, so I don't know the calendar, you can do with other things, you can do with databases, you can do with tables, anything that can be linked in that way can be um, controlled like that. So you might find other uses for that. So moving on to kind of knowledge base and databases, uh, the next thing to consider is Essentially, you can have fully structured tables as um, in the page formatting. So, for example, here I've put together a mock one for reading list. Works essentially like an Excel table. Um, so you can sort it by a, by a component. You can filter out what you want to see. So maybe you don't want to see that. Um, and each page will still have it in the page itself when you go into each item. But it will sh mean you can really customize the view of the main table when you need to find things quickly, easily. And if you have lots of things built up, let's say a reference table, you can search for the things, or you can, which I found incredibly useful, which I'm going to show now, is you can set different views. So the obvious way to use this is to change what the type of content you want to look at, so how you want to look at it. Rather than just a table, you can look for something that's more like uh, Trello formatting, which is like boards, and you can have a key groups. So for example, here's the programming language, um, and you can have it formatted that way if that's how you want to see it. Or you can have a gallery, which is potentially better if you have more kind of visual based content. So you have images in the content, you want to summarize them in really t in quickly, and so it's quicker to find 
nicely formatted kind of almost web page. And you can change, like as before, you can change what's shown in each card. So you could just have like the summary content. You could have some tags you've set which summarize it well, so you under, the, understand what they mean, make it easy to find things. But taking that a step further, if we go back to the original table, this contains all the items I have currently. I've only got two, but that's just a test. But this contains all of them. The idea is you can essentially save, have a new table as a view, which you have a preset filter on. So let's say, for example, here I filtered it based on the content that's from Microsoft. But what makes it so useful and simply better than just having it in an Excel table is now you have it in the software, it, it's all integrated together. So we go back to our notes. Here, let's say we wanted to make a reference to um, content we've got in one of our tables. We simply can call it within the page and it will now be an inline reference and it will be um, able to be accessed. So it works as a link, so we can then click the link and we go directly to that page, we can see exactly what the content's about, we can have a summary, whatever you want to do, and maybe it's an abstract, maybe it's a real paper, you can have the abstract there to summarize it. So it means when you're writing lots of complex content, information isn't being uh, lost due to so many different sources coming in. It means you can have every single source you need in one place, all links, so that you can verify the information that's there on the fly. Um, so this makes it truly the most powerful tool for these kind of things I found and I've done uh, I've demonstrated this in how I use it for personal research pro projects um, in a previous video and I think you should check that out if you're interested in that kind of uh, more information about how to do it that way so next we have something which makes it just an added feature which really makes it good for having everything centralized is to enable comments and discussions so I did briefly show this earlier where at the front of the landing page I have a discussion board um, where I can do some kind of general information some meta information about the course but this also works on every single page. So let's say this module, I can have a discussion here. So welcome to the data, data 101 module. And then I would send it and that would then go out to all the people that are sign up to this uh, for notifications on this um, page. And this can go even further. So you can go to visual lecture notes again, as before. And again, you can have a discussion at the top of the page. Um, as I just showed, so I'm not gonna send it here, but just as a demonstration. What's even more powerful is students can also, if you enable this comment, can also go in and set, um, select certain content and, and ask, uh, so what does this mean, for example? And that, and that can be sent. You can even tag a person. So you could tag the lecturer as needed and ask them directly and respond directly as well. And this will be tracked so other students can then see the conversation. And if people have similar issues, they are then all getting the same answer through this content. So this really makes it really, really interactive for students and engaging for students. Whereas previously it would be done on four pages and they have to reference the page they're talking about and it can be a bit fragmented and not all the students will see it. So you get the same question multiple times. It means that the discussions are all uh, transparent and not done through emails or other means. It can all be centralized through this platform and it means it can be controlled in a nice way and monitored in a better way. Um, so the other powerful thing is, I've mentioned this briefly about notifications with there being a mobile app, um, if you are, if you do choose to have it installed as a student uh, and, a, and one of the lecturers decides to make an update, so let's say uh, lecture moved back an hour today and I've set up a separate account that uh, my personal account I've, um, I've invited to this page and if I reference him, um, so, for example, in this case, you'd probably just reference all students and, that'd be, and it would go out to all of them, but this is one, just one example of one person. And when I send that off, the idea is that it would go directly to the student, they would get a notification, and if I show, it takes a few seconds, but if I show that it updates on my phone, so, so if I show, I don't know if it's clear. Oops. So you can see there is a notification um, that came from the Notion page. And then the student can go into that and they can see the updates. If they don't have to have notifications, they can turn these off, but it means that then if they go to the app, they'll also have an update, like a little uh, update in the app as well. So there's, there's um, a section where it has all updates uh, and you can see all the changes that have been made, all the mentions that have been made, made to you, and you can have all the content you need and push out notifications as you need um, and still have the students to opt into that in a nice way. So it's up to them to decide if they're interested in that and whether they want to have that functionality, but it is incredibly useful to at least have it available. Um, as, for example, if I demonstrate 
if I go back to the main page, potentially here, here's been in the web doc in the web um, version, and I can unsign from following to that page. So I won't get notifications from this page anymore. And then some extra functionality of embeds is, is Google Drive. So if you have um, full PDF documents or anything you need from Google Drive, you can embed that directly as well. Tweets, GitHub Gist, which is incredibly useful. So if I have an example, so if I embed a GitHub Gist here, so here's just a random one, it shows that code as well. So instead of having code chunks necessarily, you may want to embed GitHub uh, Gist instead where they also link to your GitHub page as well as needed. Um, so that can be quite handy, particularly if you're doing like heavy code based stuff, because um, it formats, I think, better when you have lots of lots of code there. Um, Google Maps, if you wanted to share a location, if you were setting up an event of some kind and wanted to share the directory directly, it will embed the map. Here's a Google Map embed, for example. So I just picked a random location in Manchester, it's the central city, and it means you have a fully embedded Google Maps that's also explorable. So if you want to share a location for whatever reason, it's quite handy. Uh, Typeform, which is essentially a survey-based uh, website where you can create uh, questionnaire. So if you wanted to feedback or you wanted to uh, confirm details with your students, you could set up a survey on the, on the website, link it with directly to the page, and they can answer it within the page itself. Um, so that's incredibly useful. Uh, and that's, yeah, so that's kind of the main stuff. Um, there's some mod formatting. You can do color coding for text as well, just to make things stand out if you need to. Um, but yeah, I really encourage you to try it out yourself. Um, have a go to the template when I share it and see what you think and see if it's something you would consider for writing, yeah, using for showing your courses on. If you'd be willing to uh, write the notes you have and the tutorials and all the things you do for your courses into one centralized platform that make it easier for your students to engage with the content and also enables them to then ask us questions as needed rather than everything being fragmented. I think it's very powerful to have that functionality in a way that's not really been done previously. Um, and of course, as mentioned initially, it is completely free for students with education accounts. So there's no reason not to. Um, yeah, I mean, considering the amount I've looked into to other software where you're potentially paying hundreds of pounds um, just to have the right to take your own notes, this is a gift to have. So I hope you find this useful um, and you enjoy the video. Thanks.